every story tied. I smell the super giant print reference Bible from Holman. This is the NASB 2020 edition, and it is in black, genuine leather. And you say, what kind of leather is that? Well, uh, it does not specify here, uh, but I would like to suggest to you that it is something special. Um, let's, let's look at the details real quick on the back. Features durable Smiths only flat binding, Two column text format, robust end of page cross reference system, topical subheadings, footnotes, words of Christ in red, 16 point type size, ribbon marker, one ribbon marker for easy referencing between pages, topical index, presentation page for gift giving, full color maps. So this is a robust Bible. It is a super giant 16 point font. Okay, I wanna do this for you so you can see a comparison of the other Holman products and see how large this 16 point font is. Uh, so I will put up the super giant on the left side of the screen. Here is the giant print reference Bible. It has a 13 point type size. Here is the large print personal size reference with 11.25 point type size. And just for kicks, we have the large print compact reference and it has an eight point type size. It, I told you it's genuine leather. Well, it's little little brother here, the large print personal size is also genuine leather. And I told you in the last video that I thought it looked like calf split leather. This does not look the same. It looks like, it reminds me sort of of the goat skin on the CSB verse by verse wide margin edition. Uh, I, I think this is goat skin. I really do. That looks like... Um, it almost looks like a Cambridge wide margin leather, um, but it, it's not edge lined. Uh, it, it does have the synthetic paste down liner. Uh, this smells like it is a goat skin. I'm not saying that it is a luxurious soothing aroma either. It does sort of have that manufactured smell. Here is the spine, NASB, Holy Bible, No American Standard Bible, and Whole Man. It does have perimeter stitching, mach machine stitching. The height is 10 and a half inches and the width is seven and a half inches. That's a large Bible. Oh, and it's, it's two inches thick too. Uh, if you are a uh, Gentile, then let me get those dimensions for you. We're looking at 19 centimeters wide by 27 centimeters tall and oof, five centimeters thick. Well, let's open it up, shall we? We have the synthetic liner. Presentation page. Here's the title page. And we got copyright page. Lay down, big fella. 2020 Supergiant Print Reference Bible, copyright 2022. The interior of this Bible was designed and typeset by 2K Denmark, proofreading by Peachtree in Georgia. This is printed in China. This is the first print of 2022 by R.R. R. Donnelly. You may recognize those three letters if you have a lot of ESV Bibles. Here's the TOC, table of contents, and there's not much uh, that you shouldn't recognize on there. Just um, So we'll sort of breeze through we have the unsightly contraction here for let's. One of the main reasons that I was looking forward to the 2020 coming out is that it uses BHQ, that is Biblia Hebraica Quinta, in the Old Testament as its primary text were available. And then in the Greek text, uh, it has NA28 and ECM, Editio Critica Mayor, it uses the coherence-based genealogical method. The NASB 2020 is going to be the first major English Bible that gives you um, ECM for Acts. Um, and now we have Mark coming out and John's going to be coming out later. General format, 
abbreviations. All right, Old Testament text that gives you a look at the ghosting. But let me tell you this. Once you see how massive these words or this font is, you're not going to be worried about ghosting. I mean, you can see this from the next state over. A 16-point font size is easy to see no matter where you are. If you think about who's going to use this Bible, uh, obviously, your older congregation members, they're going to be the ones who typically look for the 16-point font. That's also more difficult for them to carry uh, because it is a big, heavy Bible, right? The paper feels nice. The paper's white. Uh, there's no blue gutter, so no sort of recycled paper look and feel to this to this text. But look, all these pages are stuck together, um, and you know you may be accustomed to that with some Bibles. Let me see if I can fan this real quick and get some of that out. All right, here's a good example in Deuteronomy where we have the separation of footnotes here at the bottom. We have two of them, um, and then we have the cross-references here at the top. They are end-of-page cross-references. And if you have a large print, ultra-thin, uh, if you have a, a, a reference Bible, then you're going to know, well, this isn't the full amount of cross-references and footnotes, is it? And no, I don't believe it is. Uh, if it had been, they probably would have made a big deal about it on the back. Here's a good look at the, the poetic setting. All right, there you go with Proverbs and Psalm 150. I like to go to Psalm 119 to check on our acrostic. Make sure we got Hebrew letters in there because I, I don't know, maybe there's someone who, who cares. Uh, so I'm showing you that Psalm 119 indeed does have the acrostic there. Here is our New Testament page. So that gives you a look at the ghosting. And if you looked at that, you would say, man, there, there is quite a lot of ghosting. But just remember that uh, you do have a massive font right here. So the, the ghosting is obviously going to be more apparent. I think that makes sense for it to be that way. Um, here's the large print personal size. Again, this it's a big font on this one too. It's 11.25. So here's Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. Notice the size difference. So they're, they're handcrafted wide margin, verse by verse. Has nicer paper, has a prettier... Uh, two color setting. I need to show you the red letter text, so I'll go to the Sermon on the Mount. And here's what it looks like. It has sort of that orange color, like a rusty red color. Uh, it, it's not this deep, bloody scarlet red uh, that's so attractive here. I think the red looks pretty consistent through here. It does have that uh, rusty orange-brown color. All right, let's take a look at this ribbon. So this is one of the complaints that we had on large print personal size is that there's only one ribbon. Well, only one ribbon on this one too. There we go. See how it's folded and tucked in there and there's glue all over the place? I guess it's a double satin ribbon. It is really thin. Here's a look at the gilding. And it's a nice gilding, I think. Uh, now, whenever your Bible is this big, you're gilding, and, and you don't have any protection from the yap there. So, no real protection from any yap. But the gilding does look nice. It does look a little bit sparkly in some places, uh, and that's fine. I mean, look at that. A lot of nasties there. Um... Okay. See that mirror finish? That's a good sign right there. I like I like the quality of their gilding. And here is the topical index. It appears to be the same topical index that we have in the large print personal size. The people who need a 16-point font size 
are going to need it also in the topical index as well. All right, we got a bonus page here, bonus paper, and then we come to these gorgeous maps. I told you in the last Bible review that these maps come out of the Holman Bible Atlas. Uh, it's, it is their files, but they do edit the key and they add the little globe there. Um, and these are on cardstock. Well, I say it's cardstock. It feels, uh, it doesn't quite feel like tough cardstock paper. It's definitely not glossy. It doesn't feel cheap to me. It, what it feels like is two pieces of Bible paper stuck together. I, I guess we're going to have to call it cardstock. Um, maybe calling it map paper is better because it's not the glossy cardstock stuff. It also does not bleed through. So uh, that is a, a big, big plus. Um, you're not going to find Bible maps that are significantly better than these. Uh, this is just top notch. All right, um, there's no gilt line around the perimeter here. This is a tough, tough page. Um, also, you can see underneath the paste down, there is a an adhesive tape that's holding things together to make sure it doesn't rip apart. Here's a look at the corner work, which may be significant to you, uh, since I do think this is goat skin. It's gonna be hard for the elderly to carry to church with them. Or maybe, you know, my grandmother liked to have a family Bible out on her coffee table, and maybe this could serve as a just a family Bible. It shouldn't deteriorate, fall apart, and be embarrassing. So good on you, Holman. You've you've produced another great product for us. Um, it it fills in a uh, a section of the market that um, that we don't have anything from Lockman an XL edition from Zondervan. This is the ninety five text twelve point five font. So you'll see the the difference whenever I open these two up. Look how wide that is. So if you need a super giant print Bible, well, we got it thanks to Holman. We've got some quality here thanks to Holman. Uh, you, you've got a good design with, hooking up with 2K Denmark thanks to Holman. You got good paper thanks to Holman. Uh, you got a mediocre ribbon thanks to Holman, but uh, you do have really good gilding thanks to Holman. And uh, a, a pretty good looking paste down um, even though there's there's no, I mean, there's not a lot of ordination, um, not not a lot of decoration on this Bible. But if you like the goat skin look feel, um, it's sort of a manufactured smell to it, I think you will like this Bible. It's certainly going to serve its purpose. You don't have any of the rolling issue, as with the other one, except for right here, it's it stops rolling because of that adhesive. That's on the back side. You look down the spine. Thank you for watching this video. Thanks to Holman, it is a great day to love the new American standard.